One of the main problems that I've identified with trying to find your personal style is that people are trying so hard to fit into one aesthetic. Oh no, you don't understand. This is an alaya. And a what? -a? It's like a totally important designer. But in reality, people are much more complicated than just being edgy or just being elegant or just being professional. We tend to have inspirations from lots of different sources and we want a way to convey all these aspects of our personality through our clothing. My name is Ellie Jean, I'm a personal stylist and on this channel we use body types to elevate our personal style and end the war with our wardrobes. Right now I'm in Poitiers, you can expect me at home back in a couple of clips but I have some filming to do. In my last video about style roots, I gave you a quiz. This helped you determine which style roots are your most dominant three. But you guys still don't really know about the style roots in depth or how they work. The idea of style roots really is to combine your top three to create something that's uniquely you. Like Austin Cleon's idea in Still Like an Artist, where you take aspects from various sources that you like to create something unique. The problem is, People often say, I don't like that style when they're given their body type. So for example, say you were romantic, but you really don't like those feminine sort of styles. This is how eventually you would combine your style roots with your body type so that you are not sacrificing your own personal style. But before we get to that, let's talk about aesthetics. I don't like the idea of finding your aesthetic. I think that's basically finding the micro trend which fits your style roots the best buying everything from that micro tend, wearing it for a season, and then swapping it for a different aesthetic a season later. So it doesn't really work in terms of finding your personal style which is gonna work long term. A test you can do to see whether a trend works for you is, for example, take these patchwork trousers that were big in like 2020, 2021, during the pandemic basically. I think of these very much as a pandemic trouser. If you like the look of these, a good way to see if you like them because they're a trend is take the main feature of them, so they're patchwork trousers, and type this into Depop or some other sustainable clothing website, Depop's what we use in the UK, and see if you like other styles. So do you like patchwork in general? If everything there isn't really pleasing to the eye, maybe you shouldn't go ahead and buy those patchwork trousers because that implies you like it because it's a trend. Just a fun little tip to add in there. I'm about to go through my eight style routes. Hopefully this will help you find a style which will take you through your teenage years, your 20s, your 30s and beyond. And it can adapt with you as you grow. It can adapt to situations, it can adapt to age, but underneath it all, you have your style roots. Who you are underneath that you want to express through your clothing. Fire is a very sensual, glamorous, luxurious kind of priority. For fire, I took inspiration from burning roses, leopards running through the desert, dancing in the pouring rain, volcanoes and lightning. Some aspects of Fire includes leather, lace, sheer fabrics, glitter and sparkles, anything glamorous, corsets, low necklines, smoky details, fur, ruching, and other things within this vein. Flower is fire's pear, if you will. Both of these are very, what we think of as feminine kind of ideas, but on separate spectrums. So for flower, I took inspiration from baby bunnies, apple picking, a garden party, a field of tulips, cute button mushrooms and rose arches. I would describe flower as delicate, pretty, sweet, cute, and takes inspiration from princessy outfits, what we think of as girly, cute outfits, old Hollywood and even regal styles. So this includes things like puffed sleeves or dungarees, or cute knitted jumpers, love heart buttons, empire waistlines, vintage pieces, big round skirts and cap sleeves, wicker bags and ribbons. I think this is a very strong underpinning for the cottage core aesthetic, for example, and certain elements of light academia. For sun, I took inspiration from macaws flying through the rainforest or a fruit salad, daisies and bumblebees, or maybe a river flowing through a forest in the middle of autumn in Canada. 
I would describe Sun as creative, wild, bold. If you've ever said, I want an outfit to look elegant, but with a quirky undertone, then that quirkiness is Sun. Some elements of the Sun route include quirky collars or bright colors, prints, tall, oversized details, iridescence, bold styles, metallic, peplums, and just interesting details like that. Anything which makes an outfit more fun, basically. Moon is Sun's counterpart. And for Moon, I took inspiration from the glowing of the moon against the black of the night, or wolves howling in the forest, wilting flowers and bats in a cave, bones and terrifying creatures, or a lake still in the middle of the night. Some elements of Moon include corsets, plaid, lace, dark colors, elements which are ripped, leather, chunky elements and layering, fringe and metallic or celestial details like stars and moons. For mountain, I took inspiration from a mountain, still and awe-inspiring, or lions with their large manes, or a horse running, desert sand dunes, or caverns. It's very sublime, my idea of mountain. So some elements you could bring mountain into your style include waistcoats, suits, pencil skirts, structured bags, neutral tones, button-down shirts, oversized elements, suspenders or bow ties. For stone, I took inspiration from pebbles on the beach, beagles running across the beach, or skyscrapers and concrete cities. Some elements of stone include trainers, relaxed fabrics, hoodies, jogging bottoms, sunglasses, t-shirts, puffer coats, denim, baggy or oversized details. For Earth, I took inspiration of leaves on the floor of the forest, mushrooms growing on bark, moss, oak grasses and barley in the wind, poppies and, and sprawling deserts, maybe a swamp, a green pond, deers in the woods. Very earthy. So some elements of Earth include flowing fabrics, layered jewelry, natural fabrics like straw, maxi skirts, leather, suede, cowboy boots, bell sleeves, lace-up boots or animal prints, chunky jewelry or floppy hats. And this is the underpinning of aesthetics like boho, festivals, but the other side of the coin is things like dark academia. So it's that earth element there which takes it from just a professional kind of outfit and takes it, makes it something slightly different. So that's a different element of earth that you might not think about. And lastly, we have mushroom. For mushroom, I thought about the clean looking, tiny button mushroom in a forest. It's very simple and unassuming. <laughs> I also took inspiration from a very still beach or the face of a zebra, shells in a pile or smooth grasses. So mushroom is defined by things like simple patterns or, or no pattern at all. Typical fashion rules like rule of thirds, making sure everything feels put together. Neutral tones, very simple jewellery like gold or silver. Modesty, classic pieces like button downs and midi skirts. So those are my eight style routes and what each of them kind of encompass. How would you actually go about combining these different aspects of your style to create something that's unique? I'm gonna do a little case study using my own personal style for you. I would describe my roots as mushroom, flower, and fire in that order. So let's take the outfit that I'm wearing today. In fact, let's just take this top that I'm wearing today, which I think is mushroom, fire, and flower. For mushroom, first of all, you can see that it's very plain, it's very simple, and it's also modest, you know, there's no chest showing, and the fabric is quite a good quality fabric as well, so that's also another mushroom element, so it's not flimsy, it's quite structured. Flower element, quite obviously, is the puffed sleeves. It adds that princessy, regal feel. For fire, I would say maybe the fact that it's a crop top, so even though the top is inherently modest, you could pair it with something else to, to show off your midriff. And also another element of fire is that 
when it actually fit me, which it doesn't anymore, I'm too small for it, but when it did fit me, it clung to my waist and created this lovely sense of curve emphasis. So as you can see, rather than taking one piece of clothing from, say, moon, one piece of clothing from flower, and one piece of clothing from earth, which is going to create this very unbalanced mishmash, you want each piece that you select in your wardrobe to be a combination of all three of your style roots. This means that pieces go together much more harmoniously, and it looks a lot more like you've thought through each piece rather than trying to create a costume which is not going to really work. And this process is exactly what I do for you in my style files that I create. So I take your style roots and I come up with outfits that would work particularly for you because the pieces have all of your style roots combined. Now at first, it might be quite intimidating to think of trying to combine all three style roots in every outfit that you come up with. So I would start by doing this exercise of doing two at a time. So start with mushroom and flower and look on Pinterest and try and find an outfit which combines both. For example, this example of this, this dress here, the bag is a wicker bag which goes under flower. The dress is quite modest. The frills are very flower by being very delicate, soft and rounded. The pattern is both mushroom and flower. So, you know, we can even get down to each individual detail being both. So this polka dot is both mushroom and flower because it's very simple, so it's a simple pattern and there's not a lot of colours going on, so that's mushroom elements. And it's flower because it's little and it's rounded and it's delicate. Now, if we look at this picture of flower and fire, this is going to be a very feminine example because we have our two most feminine, or what we think of as feminine, examples coming together here. For flower, we have this very old Hollywood feel. We have the lace on the bust, the floral pattern on the skirt, the rounded neckline. And for fire, we have that silky fabric, the curve emphasis on the slight structure in the dress, the, is she wearing fishnets? I think she's wearing fishnet tights as well, that's very fire. So you can see how these two things are coming together. Now, if we look at fire and mushroom, this is actually a very similar dress to the first one in some ways. It has that polka dot influence coming in, which is the mushroom element there, which is very classic. And it's even got the same color pattern but you can see how this is very different to the flower example because that silk is very fire the fabric is draped and just drapes over her curves rather than being very sweet and tied in a little bow in the middle I can't remember if the first one was but you know that's kind of the vibe the dress is longer and it has that very very sexy slit up the leg the red influence is both classic and it's also fire because there's that hint of sensuality. So that's a great way to start by just going one by one. I really hope this video has helped you clarify what each of the style roots mean. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you will enjoy my playlist on building your personal style from scratch. And if you want me to create a style file for you, head to bodyandstyle.com and we can arrange that. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.